Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Franklin here and today we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna talk about some Pokemon hot takes from my Discord channel members. If you guys want to join my Discord and exclaim some crazy ass stuff, go ahead and do so in the description. You can join the Discord right there. Uh, and most importantly, like and subscribe. I appreciate all your guys' support. You guys have been killing it so far, even though we've been kind of slow with Pokemon news and all that stuff. But I am going to ramp up once we can start getting more information in regards to the next Pokemon games or even a DLC in general. So, all right, let's get right into it. I'm not expecting this video to be crazy long, but let's enjoy some of these hot takes. All right, here we go. First hot take in Discord. Galar isn't that bad of a region. It's just, uh, uh, Well, it's kind of an interesting take i do think it's kind of a hot take but that's solely because the way sword and shield presented the galar region i feel like it just didn't do enough justice we all seen the wild area which technically is the biggest highlight of the game as well as the isle of armor dlc and the crown tundra dlc personally i like the atmosphere and the way the landscape looks in the dlc and there are maybe one or two areas in Galar that I really enjoyed, uh, particularly the Mushroom Forest. I completely don't know what the city names are, and that's just an indication how bad Galar is. You can't remember the cities. I love that um, biome. I guess we like to call it biome or city. And I believe I love the area where there's like a huge like castle or... I really don't know what the name is, honestly, but I think it's kind of a hot take. I think the issue with Galar is just it's just not a more nostalgic place for a lot of people. And of course, because Sword and Shield is technically the first mainline new gen eight, you know, games that was introduced on Nintendo Switch. I just feel like Sword and Shield, the way it presented itself, it just didn't do Galar justice. I feel like if there was more memorable areas and more nostalgic Pokemon and you know with more lovable characters galar would be a really good you know region but in comparison to like kanto johto Hoenn, yanova Sinnoh, i mean it really falls flat so i'm gonna have to disagree with this i think it's a hot take though so good job making a hot take all right next up actually that first person is uh there's their username is leo i think that's what they're called next up we got is banana breath with double ends. Forgettable Pokemon like Sunkern aren't forgettable when you think about them, but then you forget them again. So are they memorable or forgettable? Well, memorable to me, a Pokemon that is memorable, memorable is a Pokemon that will never fade through the testaments of time. Like for example, you're never going to forget Greninja. That's a memorable Pokemon. You're never going to forget Scizor, Dragonite. Those are memorable Pokemon. I think forgettable Pokemon are those Pokemon where you're like, wait, that's an actual Pokemon? Or if it gets to the point where you completely forget like their names. Like I completely forgot like the the Vivlion, um, you know, the little butterfly from Generation 6. I completely forget their pre-evolution line. Like I, that's, that's a forgettable Pokemon. A Pokemon that you can't even think of their name off the top of your head. And you don't know what typing they are or what dex number they are. I mean, to that point, those are forgettable. So I would say that's a forgettable Pokemon. I understand where Sunkern, because Sunkern technically isn't a forgettable Pokemon because of Sunflora. But if you don't know or you didn't know that Sunkern was an actual Pokemon, then that's forgettable. So that's just my opinion. All right. Next up, Mega FN Sableye says Lopunny is not hot. Hot take, but I agree with it. You guys are just horny little creeps. Stop humanizing Rule 34 in Pokemon, all right? Go go play some sports. <laughs> all right, up next is Rowlet. Is the best grass-type starter, says the awesome spy guy. Um, You know, I would agree to this because up to that point, Rowlet would have been the best starter if Bulbasaur did not exist. I think personally Bulbasaur is the best grass starter of all time. I know some people might think Rowlet. I think actually the Alolan like starters are 
pretty damn underrated. And I think as a trio overall, I would say like they're more fairly like the more like the best starters like trios ever. Like if you look at you know Rowlet, um, you look at Litton, and you look at Poplio, I think those three are just like on their on their own they're phenomenal. And of course they're me their final. I almost said mega. <laughs> Their final evolutions are phenomenal. So, Rowlet being the grass, the best grass type starter, I'm gonna have to disagree. I think Bulbasaur is by far way better than Rowlet. That's just my opinion. People will have different opinions because evolution starters and starters themselves are always controversial. That's very opinionated. But I'm gonna say it's a hot take. Ah, is it really a hot take? I'm gonna give it a warm take. Some people might agree with this. I think. Again, Bulbasaur is the better starter. All right. Meganium is far superior to Feraligatr and Typhlosion. This is a white hot take because, first of all, I think Meganium is super duper trash. Feraligatr and Typhlosion, I'm going to say out of these three, if we're not talking about, you know, different forms or different regional variants, Feraligatr clears both of these starters. And I think Meganium is at the very bottom when it comes to usable Pokemon. And actually, you know, speaking about forgettable Pokemon, Meganium could be a forgettable Pokemon if you forgot that it's an actual Pokemon. Obviously, no one will because it's a starter. If this Pokemon wasn't a starter, I think it'd be very forgettable. But for Alligator clears both Typhlosion and Meganium, so this is a super hot, white hot take. All right, next up. Shiny hunting is overrated. Well, oh, I keep forgetting the this is G33K. This guy's been in my channel and Discord for quite a while, so shout outs to him. So Joanne 12 Luis says Shiny hunting is overrated. What is so fun about running in circles for minutes, even hours until your eggs hatch out just for your Pokemon to get a reskin? <sighs> interesting. Now this is a very interesting I think this will be a hot take. I I do agree, only because I don't shiny hunt. If I was shiny hunting, then I would completely disagree. I think shiny hunting gives players more of a feeling of, you know, I actually found a shiny on my own. I didn't use, you know, genning tools or ask someone to trade me for a shiny Pokemon. I think shiny hunting is more of a, of a, okay, I finished the story. I finished collecting Pokemon. I finished my Pokedex. Now I can take it to the next step and be an actual true Pokemon completionist and get a shiny Pokemon. Now I'm not going to lie, when Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl dropped, I actually did shiny hunt um, Pokemon by hatching eggs. And I believe they were uh, shiny Cranidos, shiny Gligar, and shiny Apom. Like those are the three Pokemon that I shiny hunted. And it actually didn't take very long because I already got the shiny charm. I have a Flash Fire and Magma Armor Pokemon that can... You know, help me out with uh, hatching eggs and flame body too. Of course, the ability. I don't think it's flash fire. I think it's flame body. Now that I think about it, but um, yeah. I personally think shiny hunting is a little bit overrated. But to say that a Pokemon, you're just getting a Pokemon because of a reskin, I think that in itself is a little, little of a bit of a hot take because again, some people, or if not a lot of people prefer the shiny variants of other Pokemon and just I think it just comes down to whether you feel like getting a shiny Pokemon is actually rewarding and if you're a completionist like me and other people then shiny hunting is like the ultimate you know check mark to the list of oh I completed this game by truly getting a shiny Pokemon so I'm gonna say it's a hot take I think it's a hot take depending on who you talk to because I know a lot of people don't shiny hunt. Because shiny hunting does take a massive amount of times, Especially when you don't have a shiny charm. Or the oval stone that helps you with eggs and all that stuff. So, uh, I would agree to a certain extent. But based on my experience, shiny hunting is actually... It doesn't take that long for me. So, again, that just depends. And this guy said that's the wildest one so far about the Meganium. Well, oh, yeah, I'm agree. Shit's trash. <laughs> all right. Again, Joanne 12 Luis says the Unovian starters are all mid 100. Someone actually reacted with 100. That wasn't me. Otherwise, it would have been blue. Um, you know, looking back at it, the Unovian starters are kind of mid. I mean, if you 
look at the base Pokemon, they're not that great. And if you look at the final evolutions, I mean, they're all, like, pretty damn bad. If you think about it, Superior's only, like, saving grace is its hidden ability. Which is contrary. And then Emboar itself, we kept getting more fire and fighting Pokemon as starters. And people were getting kind of pissed off about it because we already had Blaziken. And we already had Infernape. So people were pretty pissed at Emboar. And Emboar is not that great either. And then we have Samurott. I feel like Samurott definitely would have benefited more if it had a secondary typing. But just the stats and its typing and move pull on its own, it's just not that great. So I'm going to agree. This is actually a pretty interesting take. I think it's a hot take because, you know, again, Unova Association is always pretty damn high when it comes to the Pokemon fan base. But I'm going to have to agree. I'm going to agree with this. I think the Unovian stars are all mid, as far as I know. All right, Junior Flow is giving me a set. Dragapult with Binding Band, Cursed Body, Terra-type Steel. Max HP, max speed, hasty nature, thunder wave, confuse ray, astonish, and infestation. Um, this is an underrated set. Okay, let's talk about this set. I mean, I don't have a problem with Dragapult. I just have a problem with confuse ray. The problem with confuse ray for me is that there is a guaranteed chance that your opponent's Pokemon will never get hit in Confusion. And then there's also a chance where they're just going to snap out after the first turn. So I don't think Confuse Ray is that great. Astonish isn't that great either because, again, there's a small chance you can flinch your Pokemon. I think if you replace Astonish with Hex, Hex can definitely have a lot of more synergy with Thunder Wave. Infestation is actually pretty interesting. I never used a Dragapult with Infestation because I think bulkier... Pokemon like Toxapex benefit way more from using Infestation. Uh, but if I had to change this set, I'm going to have to get rid of Astonish for Hex. And then if you really want to chip damage off of your opponent's Pokemon, I would, instead of using Confuse Ray, I would use Curse. Curse would be far better because a Ghost type, you lose half your HP, but then your opponent is just taking severe amounts of damage. One fourth of their HP every turn. With you know, infestation, it just racks up to the point that I think they pretty much lose their Pokemon in four turns. And that's prior to any damage from previous, you know, hazards or moves on their own. So, yeah, I would fix this if I was you. I don't think it's underrated. I think it's uh, not good. All right. Do we have anything else? No, that's pretty much it. So there you have it. There's all of the hot takes. If you guys want to show more of the hot takes there. Go ahead and join my Discord down below in the description. Uh, also, please like and subscribe. That is the best way to support me for free. I had pretty interesting fun with this. So I like to continue doing these type of videos more. So thank you guys so much. It's your boy Franklin signing out. Peace.